Okay, today we're going to do some uh, some jerky, some venison jerky. I got two and a half pound roast here. We're going to open it up, and see what it looks like. Um, this is from uh, December of 2011. It's now what August 2013. So it's been in the freezer for a little while, but I had a request for jerky, so we're going to try this out. I'm going to open it up and see what we got. Okay, I pulled it out of the bag, uh, rinsed it off. Always rinse meat off. Um, I've already sliced this out. What you got to do is you got to separate the different muscle groups because this tendon that you're seeing here, that's going to make it really tough. So I'm going to have to clean all the tendon out. All I want is just basically just the raw meat. Uh, it's got a little freezer burn over here. I don't, I don't really think that's going to affect it at all. But I got to get all this skin and tendon off that separates each one of the muscle groups. So it's going to be a long, tedious process. I'm going to get cutting on that and I'll come back and we'll just show you what we got with just the meat once you get all that cleaned up because uh, this is going to take a little while. Okay, this just came up here. We were just talking about this. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of laying the knife along these tendons and just kind of filleting them out. If you've never filleted a fish, you just kind of keep working those tendons. And then if you get in a tough spot, you just forget it and just cut it. Um, I'm gonna, there, here we go. I'm going to play with this one real quick and show you what I mean. Nope, that's not a good one. I'll come back to it with another one. I'll get one ready and we'll figure it out. Okay, I found a cut that's going to be real easy to explain. All I'm going to do is slide the knife up under here, get up under that tendon, and work my way out. Okay, now I've got it out, and I'm going to flip it over on the tendon. I'm going to lay my knife at an angle down, and just basically just cut that tendon out. There it is. Throw it in the sink. Flip it over. Yep, got most of it. A little cleanup work, I can just nice thin slices. Because that tendon is going to make it really tough and chewy. If you've ever had jerky and you've got a chewy piece, that's what it is. Okay, I'm going to do it here one more time. This one, this one, you can see it's real thin. This is going to take a couple times to do this one, I think. But you just keep doing this. you got to get all this tendon out. Or right, it's going to make it chewy, it's going to make it tough. You just it's just not good and if you have dogs or chickens or whatever they'll they'll eat it so they'll be your friends all right let's see that. all right now i got this one laid back I'm, you lose a little bit of meat when you fillet but it's worth it all right i'm just gonna lay that knife down work that tendon work my hand around sometimes i use a fork to hold it down i do the same thing with fish yeah that one didn't work out so great but it's okay Get up under it, work my way from the other side coming up. Just keep getting that tendon, that vein out of there. A little more right here. I'm not really sure which one. I think it's a separation of a muscle group right there. Oh, nice follow right up that vein, right up that tendon. Get this out of the way. This is why jerky is so expensive because it's so time consuming to get the meat prepared. The marinating and all that stuff is a piece of cake. Once you got all this out of here. You see there's a vein. So I gotta work that vein, get that out of there. Because it's surrounded in tendon and other stuff. And just keep working it. All right, now I'm going to separate this. Now that right there actually looks like a pretty good piece for jerky. Um, and I'll just slice it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, oh, nice to everybody, and I pointed away when I did that. Uh, a little bit of tendon here. Just cut that out. That's a nice little cube. If you see white, try to get rid of it the best you can. For your first batch, you know, it doesn't really matter how much you get out. Do what you can, and you'll you'll start working it later. Plus, this fat and tendon will not dehydrate as fast as the meat, so it'll give you a chance to spoil. If you get these little chunks in there, just go ahead and throw them in there. You can throw them all in the dehydrator when we get to that phase. Little pieces. Of, oh, that's the wrong way. Okay, that one right there is too thick. So I'll do that one. Is I'll just make a couple of nice slice slices. A little bit of tendon there. I'll be all right. See. 
according to my blade, my fingers, is they're, they're, they're thinner than my finger, and they're going to be a lot thinner when they dehydrate. All right, so I'm going to get all this worked over, and then we'll go to the pan here in a little bit. Okay, I want to show you a couple slices here on how this is working. Got a little tendon there. Get rid of that. Okay. What I've done is I found a cut of meat here that's really long, so all I'm doing is just cutting them real thin, not paper thin, maybe as thick as a pencil, maybe. And this one's a, kind of a triangle piece, so I'll just do that one the same. So, there we go. So give you an idea of a couple of pieces. This takes a while to do, so those are really good pieces. And then what we'll do is we'll soak those here in a little bit. And I'll go over that and I'll do, show you all the spices I'm going to use. But that's that's really good cuts there. Those are going to come out really nice. And this is going to take a couple of days to do it, but we'll soak them for an hour or so and then we'll put them in the dehydrator so you get to see all that. Okay, here's the here, here's the piece. The grain is running this way. Now some people say you should go with the grain, some people say you go against the grain, some people say diagonal. What I've found is if you go with the grain, then your pieces are going to be very hard to bite off. If you go against the grain, they're going to be very easy to bite off in chunks. For steaks, you kind of go a little bit the opposite. Now, I'm going to try to do this as thin as I can. Yeah, see those are good. Now, this was a two and a half pound roast. This is probably not going to make but about a half a pound of jerky, if that. You see how thin I'm trying to slice those. It's got a little bit of the tent on the outside, that's okay, because that's, uh, that's going to come off in one bite anyway. And what we were just talking about here was that I like to pepper mine a little hotter because when we're out hunting, we don't sit down in front of the TV and eat a pound and a half of jerky. We'll eat it when we're in the stand or when we're hunting, and it's cold. It's supposed to be cold. That's actually that's a really nice piece. Look at that. Um, so we want it a little hotter because it's 38 degrees outside, 40 degrees, it's cold. So you're going to want to have a little something to warm you up. So that's it. We're just going to slice all this up. I'll show you the cuts. We'll put them in the glass pan uh, with the marinade. Or actually, we're probably just going to put them in a one-gallon uh, Ziploc bag. That works really well because then I can put some of the marinade in there, uh, all my spices, put the meat in there, and instead of having to flip the meat, all I really got to do is just knead the bag around and it'll it'll spin it all around so look but looking at those those are coming out really nice so we'll show you here in a minute all right another thing i'm trying to do here is show you this muscle group right here we just pulled this beautiful cut of meat out and look at that that's just that's beautiful we were just talking about how that would be a beautiful little roast for two people all right let's see if i can do this and get a good camera angle what i'm doing here is i'm trying to get up under this tendon right there without poking through there we go all right that's perfect. Okay, I'm gonna lay it down and do this cut. I've got a taller knife I should be using. Just don't get in a rush. Hold the tendon, pull it back. Just run right along that tendon. You just cut it loose, and there's all that tendon. Pull that out. Let's see how we did. Oh, did pretty good. A little cleanup work here. Kind of work it backwards. Pretty good. Clean this up a little more. We're almost ready. Okay, that looks good. I got one more in there. I got to get out. I'll get that out, and then we'll uh, do some slicing. Okay, there's some really good pieces here. We've got them kind of. That last rose that got cut up. It, see this one right here. That's nice. I'm gonna cut that chunk off right there. We'll do that separate. That's gonna be a nice little. A nice chunk and this one here is going to look really nice. So those are going to be great. These here are a little thick so I'm going to slice them down like this. It will help them dehydrate better. Got a little bit of tendon in there. That shouldn't be too bad. I mean, that will just be a chewy piece. Too much meat on it to waste. And then these here, just make them a little, just thin them out because this meat, some of this meat here is a little thick. It, it, it's not, some of it's co really cold and almost frozen. So that meat there is kind of hard, so it's really easy to slice. That's a really nice piece there, but I'm still gonna cut it at the tendon in both spots where the tendon muscle line was. See, that'll be a nice piece there. 
do the same thing here. Cut at the muscle group. And that's just personal preference. Um, one of the things that came up is some people say that uh, deer meat and that kind of stuff is real gamey. Um, it's gamey to a point, but the reason that it's not gamey for us is that when we do our meat, um, we don't have a, cool, or a, a, a refrigerator to cool our meat. So what we do is we end up putting it in coolers, big old body coolers, and we soak it in ice for at least three days. Uh, that's after you skinned it, cleaned it, all that kind of stuff. So all the meat is sits in ice for at least three days so it gets all the blood out. So that's it. I'm, there we go. All right, that's it. I'm going to get my bag together and I'll fire this back up in a second. Okay, so that was a, what did I say that was? That was a two and a half pound venison roast. This is really all the meat we got out of it. Um, we're gonna put it in the bag here in a minute. Um, this is just the scraps, so the chickens and that kind of stuff, they're gonna love me here in a little bit. Now, I don't have the actual one I really like. This is Allegro uh, turkey or teriyaki marinade. It's really good. You gotta watch it, it settles at the bottom. We're probably not gonna use that one. For those that like it hot and spicy, this is really good. It's really good. It's got a lot of peppers in it. This is a little spicier than I've been requested on this batch. So we're probably just going to use just a hint of this. And then it doesn't really matter what your brand of, uh, of liquid smoke is. Just get some liquid smoke, pour it in the bag. Um, and then pepper. Uh, I'll put a little bit of pepper in there. I'm also going to use a little bit of garlic. and But I'll use the pepper and the Montreal steak seasoning when it hits the dehydrator trays. Now when it comes to your garlic, the garlic goes inside the marinade, and if you go to Sam's, you can get this garlic, this is $4, but you can get a little bitty, you know, four or eight ounce can for $3, so just get the big one and put it in the freezer. And this minced garlic, and I just put that in there with my liquid smoke, and whichever one of the Allegro's I'm going to do, let it soak for a couple of hours. When it comes to the dehydrator trays, I don't use any salt. Liquid smoke has a ton of salt in it, so I don't salt it at all. It'll dehydrate up just fine. All right, we'll go from there. I'm going to just put this in a bag, uh, and I'll show you when we pull it out. We put it on the trays, and we'll go from there. Okay, uh, it's been almost a week that this stuff's been mar marinating. So here's what I got. I'm going to separate it, lay it on these trays. I'm doing this in the sink because this is going to drip. I take the really small pieces, and I put them in the middle, and I just spread them out. I try to get it. Don't much in here. I try to get it to where they don't touch if at all possible. And I just keep spreading them out. And I kind of can't see like the flat ones. Spread those out. Again, try not to get them to touch. Because if you do that, it's just going to be harder for them to get the moisture off and wick that off. One of the things when you're looking at a dehydrator. If you're shopping for dehydrators, you try to find one with a lot of trays. Um, I've gone through a few trays. This one's got five trays. So I've lost a couple of trays that melt in the dishwasher or whatever. Now I've got two dehydrators. So when I'm doing this, um, I've got one dehydrator for meat and one for herbs and other stuff. Fruits and whatever. Uh, my stepmom likes to do fruits and stuff. So... It, you really theoretically can use these are too big. Yeah, I might as well squeeze that one in there. Um, you realistically can use okay, that's one tray. So that one's done. Now I just grab another tray and I put it on top. And I keep going. You theoretically can use the same trays for both. Um, I find that when I wash my trays, I, especially after, after I've done meat, when I do herbs and stuff, it's no big deal. But after I do uh, meat, I find that my trays have a, a stain, which is just really just the marinade and that kind of stuff uh, that, that just gets on them and it creates just a meat stain like your grill would have. Uh, it's really not that big a deal, but to me it's just, I don't know, maybe it's a psychological thing and I, I think that there's meat on there even though there's not and it's been sterilized and cleaned and all that. Um, she actually, my stepmom actually cleaned this one. She scrubbed it pretty serious for a couple of hours. And I think that was after like one use, and so it was kind of a kind of a butt whipping to to get all that all that stain off. Me, I wash them, hit them with a hit them with a brush, hit them with a green pad, throw them in the dishwasher. They're sterilized. If it's got a little stain on it, I'm really not all that worried about it. Uh, that's why I have two of them. She when she when they moved out here, she uh, she came with one with a dehydrator, and I had my dehydrator. Okay, 
that one's done, we're going to do another. And this is it. You just keep going and going and going. I mean, I think the hardest part is the cutting it. Um, now, the mix that I showed you was just basically liquid smoke, um, a little Montreal steak seasoning. I like a little Allegro in there. I don't add salt because the liquid smoke has enough salt in it. Um, and then basically I've just kneaded this bag a couple of different times while, I, while it's been in there. Um, and that's it. Um, now what I'll do when I get this all flattened out is I will uh, sprinkle more uh, Montreal steak seasoning on it and also some uh, I just use peppercorn pepper. Uh, you can use black pepper. It's a little fine for me. I like it a little more chunky. Uh, the, the, the actual black pepper is actually pretty hot when it when it sits on this stuff. Um, something else somebody else had brought up was, you know, how do you make it hotter? Well, sometimes you can use teriyaki for flavor, and teriyaki jerky is good. Um, it's too specific for me. Uh, it's, uh, it just tastes too much like teriyaki, uh, which is fine, but I'm not really into teriyaki jerky. Um, another idea was that when you do your... Oh, let me just trace it. Bam, so there we go. One of the ideas is when you do your marinade, uh, put a couple drops. Oh, that one's way thick. I gotta make sure that tray's on the bottom. That one didn't get trimmed down quite enough. That one's gonna take a while. Um, when you do your mixes, um, maybe jalapeno juice. Like if you if you're cutting up jalapenos or throw a jalapeno, you know, in the in the uh, in the marinade, just the whole pepper. I mean, just cut it up, dice it up, and throw it in there. Then now you're not gonna use it when you dehydrate but the oils and stuff will come off of the jalapenos and get into the meat. Um, uh, my brother-in-law likes stuff really hot, uh, so what I do with for him is he's got some ghost hot sauce, ghost pepper hot sauce, and it's way too hot for me, but uh, he likes it, so he brings me the meat and he wants me to make him a batch. Uh, I'll put not even a Maybe a, maybe a half a teaspoon in. It's it's that hot. I mean, it really it soaks into the to the meat and it, it just burns you. And it's just not enjoyable for me. All right, we're almost done. And then this juice here. If I had a dog, the dog would just love it because it's just meat and blood and flavorings and whatever. So that's it. So you saw how big the roast was. I don't remember how big the roast was. This is good. Of course, this whole thing has gone a week. So I don't, I don't remember where I was at with the weight. Okay. Now that's done. Now we get into the fun stuff. Is basically, I just took the peppercorn, and it's just your standard grocery store peppercorn. Okay. Just, just. Now I'm doing this, and when I'm doing this, I'm doing it over the entire set, the entire batch. Okay, now here's my my Montreal. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this. Okay, now I know this one had thicker pieces on it. I think that one did too. So that's gonna go on the bottom. Okay, now these here too, these two here, that one was the second one on the last batch. So I'm trying just to let all of this stuff kind of sprinkle down through. So I don't waste much of this, much of my seasonings. There's that one. Go back to the peppercorn. And I had a big peppercorn grinder, and I loved it. And it just got wore out. I think I dropped it and it broke. Okay, and see that one? That one looks really good. This one's the one that's going to the bottom. But see how it's got some on there? And see how these are doing? So now I'm going to move this one to the bottom. Because it will continue to get some on there. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And you got to keep in mind also, when I say I don't add salt, I don't add salt on its own. The, uh, the Montreal steak seasoning has salt in it too. So, between all this other stuff, if you go adding salt, you're just going to give yourself a heart attack. See, it's got little pieces on there. And you just kind of play with it like this and, and try out your different recipes and see what you think that was. Peppercorn, I thought it was Montreal. And that is it. Alright. I'm going to put that one over here. Okay, this one goes on the bottom. Hold on a second, let me grab a plate. I always put a plate underneath my dehydrator. Let me 
this over here. Okay. So there's that one. Now let me see if we can move this real quick one-handed. I'm doing this second with my iPhone because I got too much other stuff going on. All right. All those trays right there. I'm going to pause real quick. Okay. There's my dehydrator. It's just a little, he little heater coil. It's got a cord plugs into the wall. See my plates underneath. My vents are all the way open. I'm going to set this down on here. There you go. One of my trays, you can see right here. One of my trays got melted right there. It's a little bit of a tight fit. And that's just because of the uh, dishwasher. So try to put your racks on the top. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, five trays. Um, when this is all done, we're going to weigh this again. All right, I'm going to put my lid on. There's my lid. Open my vents up at least halfway. Um, and that's it. Uh, again, I mean, this usually, I think this normally had two more trays. So that's it. I'm going to plug it in. Um, tomorrow morning, what I'll do is I'll start moving the bottom tray to the top and just, or maybe the top one to the bottom and rotate them around so I can try to get them all done at the same time. The bottom ones usually dehydrate quicker than the top ones. So initially, I try to put my thicker meat cuts down here and just rotate them around. And that's it. So here in a day or two, maybe by tomorrow night, maybe the next day, we'll be able to pull it out, pull it off, weigh them, and see how much uh, weight we lost, because it's going to be quite a bit. So that's that phase. Here you go. All right. Okay. Here we go. Really thin little pieces. All right. I'm going to pull all these off. And this works 24 hours. This is actually about 36 hours. So I'm going to pull all these off. We'll go weigh them and uh, see what we get. Some people uh, spray Pam on here. Uh, I don't like to because it adds oil. Throw these in a bowl. And that's it. You can see the little residue on the tray. There's the tray that sticks. I'm going to put all these in a bowl and we're going to go weigh them and then I'll show you one or two more things and this will be done. Okay, my scale's down the shop so I came down here. Okay, now what I do is I put a bowl on there, an empty bowl, same bowl. Zero this. I almost had it. Okay. Alright, it's on zero. Take the whole bowl off. This is just for y'all. Normally I really don't care how much how much it weighs. Yep, right at even just a hair under a half a pound. Just what I see the camera makes it look a little skewed, but it's right at a half a pound. Okay. So two and a half pounds becomes a half a pound. So that's that. Uh and then we'll go back up. I got one more step and we'll be done. Okay, there it is. Just do it in a Ziploc bag. Now it's time for the final step. Deskin packets. Um, I, you can buy these. Um, I probably need to buy some. Put that in there. There it is. I need to buy some. I just I'm, I'm cheap, and whenever we have training around here, uh, guys usually bring jerky, and there's always a deskin packet in, in their jerky packet. So that's it. Um, some of the other notes about this is I let it come to room temperature before I put it in a bag. Uh, today the transport to the shop to weigh it and back did that. Um, I don't press all the air out of the bag because these it's sharp and it's dry and it'll just poke a hole in the bag anyway. So just you know knock out as much air as possible and that's it. That's gonna pack it and that's good. You're good for years. If you try to vacuum seal it, you're gonna poke holes in the bag because the jerky's uh, got sharp edges now. And uh, you're ready to eat. So two and a half pounds makes a half a pound. Uh, at least the way I did it. Okay. There you go. Bye.